Hi, this is Pastor Rick. I want to read a passage to you from John chapter 20, verse 19. So when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and when the doors were shut where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. And when Jesus had said this, he showed them both his hands and his side. The disciples then rejoiced when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, their sins have been forgiven them. And if you retain the sins of any, they have been retained. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples were saying to him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see his hands, uh, the imprint of the nails, and put my finger into the place of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. After eight days his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, the doors having been shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach here with your finger, and see my hands, and reach here with your hand, and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Thomas therefore answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Because you have seen me, have you believed? Blessed are they who did not see, and yet believe. Now what I think is kind of interesting about this passage is the disciples, other than Thomas, saw Jesus and he showed them his hands and his side. And of course, that gave evidence that it's Jesus and that he had died and he was alive again. So they were rejoicing because he was alive again. Thomas just wasn't there. And he gets kind of a bum rap. People always call him Doubting Thomas. Actually, he wasn't there, and he was just asking an honest question that we might have asked if we had been living with them at that time. And that is, he wanted to see evidence that Jesus is uh, the one, that he had died and was alive again. This passage gives us a lot of confidence in the truth that Jesus Christ actually did die because his own disciples could hardly believe it until they met him risen again and saw physical evidence that it was the same Jesus. That's one of the reasons why we know this story is abs absolutely true, it's accurate. And uh, it's interesting also when Thomas saw Jesus and he saw the wounds in his hands and in his side, he said, my Lord and my God. Now we have a, a disadvantage today. The disciples who didn't get it until they had actually seen Jesus and seen the wounds, they didn't get it, they didn't believe. Today, we have the, uh, the uh, privilege, the opportunity to tell you about Jesus, but Jesus is not physically here, he is in heaven because he ascended and he's there at the right hand of God the Father. So, today, I can tell you the story, it's an accurate story, and you can believe this story about Jesus Christ, but he is not physically here, so you can see him. So the disciples had a distinct advantage in that they actually saw Jesus could touch him. Uh, you and I uh, don't have that advantage, but we have a, cer a certain clear, accurate record of what they experienced and how they came to faith. It's by reading this story that you can gain faith in the truth. Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He did die for your sin. He was buried. He did rise again, and he's alive today. You can put your faith and trust in him uh, and be sure you're believing in the truth. God bless you. Have a great day.